Hey, welcome everybody to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Wednesday, September 18th, and I am Brian Lee Gilbert. It, that, doesn't that mean American Horror Story is starting tonight? It does. Featuring it means Matthew, American, I mean, Matt Morrison. AHS 1984 is starting this evening. Matt Morrison in very I, revealing I, I costumes. I very, I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm Paul Wontorek. I'm on brand. <laughs> and we are joined here in the studio, as always, by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello, everybody. Yes. Uh, we're very excited. Who's here? We, guys, we have Nick Fradiani, American Idol winner Woo-hoo! and star of the touring production of More Bronx importantly, sale. he's from Connecticut. He's from Connecticut. You're from Connecticut. I'm yes. from Connecticut. Yeah. yeah, we had a big, there was a big Connecticut no. cuties, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Connecticut cuties discussion here. Uh, we're very excited to talk to Nick about all of the exciting things he has going on right now. But first, let's talk about today's top five. We're all going to die over this off-Broadway play. American Horror Story I time. Know, oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so Young Jean Lee is a very talented playwright. Um, her yes. play Straight White Men mm-hmm. played on Broadway last yeah. year and yep. got great reviews. That was a great production. Awesome. And now um, the solo show that was written in 2011 called We're Gonna Die. You, you already sort of spoiled it. Uh, <laughs> we'll play the Tony Kaiser Theater second stage off Broadway. Raja Feather Kelly. Well, direct Ooh, and choreograph. That's a great name. Officially my favorite new creative yeah, that's member absolutely. name. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know Raja, but I'm into it. Um, and Janelle McDermott will star, a, a young talent. I don't know her no, very not well. Very familiar, she, was, yeah. she was actually in a Bronx tale on Broadway, which ties in with our guest today, right? That's, you know what? Uh, it's a one woman show, uh, performed as a series of hilarious and heartbreaking stories and songs. It offers insight into what keeps people going as they hurdle toward the finish line. It has Ooh. original music by y- Young Jean Lee writes music? I did not know this. What? I, I was excited. Oh my I had to check this, but With yeah. Tim Simmons, additional music by Jean, my, John Michel, Lyles, I decided. And, uh, and lyrics by Young Jean Lee. That's Jean-Lee. so exciting. Wow. That's so Maybe, cool. Yeah, so this will, be, this will be a cool thing. It starts February 4th, 2020, off-Broadway. And Soleil Pfeiffer is booked and Busy. Everybody wants. The, um, Soleil, Soleil Pfeiffer is just doing everything to sort of catch you up to speed. So she is in San Diego right now. She's at the Old Globe. She's playing. Uh, she's in Almost Famous. I'm going to see that. In a Are you of weeks. really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know Ooh. that. Sorry, okay. I don't mean to rub it in. <laughs> so, so she is in San Diego in this show through October 27th. Then she is playing Avita at New York City Center. She starts that in November, November 13th then what? through the 24th. And then the exciting stuff. She's doing the light in the piazza. Yay. Which is very exciting. She's doing this with Renee Fleming, the Tony-nominated opera star, uh, who is reprising her performance as Margaret Johnson uh, from the London production, which just happened. But, like, it's... Oh, so, listen. The Soleil Pfeiffer uh, version of this is happening in Chicago. It'll be at the... Um, which theater? In, the Lyric Opera House in Chicago. Oh, my God. It's enormous. Yes. It's huge. It's um, going to be this little for and most of the audience. Renee Fleming will be right at home. Uh, and it'll be happening December 14th through the 29th. However... This production is also going to be in Los Angeles. Oh. So, but this, is this one. the same one that was in London? It is, yes. Okay. And so in the Los Angeles one, Dove Cameron will be playing the role of she Claire did it in alongside. London. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, and Brian Stokes Mitchell will be the senior. Oh, and that'll be ooh. happening in October at LA's Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, October 12th through the 20th. 20th. Okay. And then in December, Soleil Pfeiffer joins with Renee so Fleming. Soleil Pfeiffer has her September, October, November, December book. Yes. And then, and then next almost year, she'll be almost famous on Broadway. Yes. Maybe. So um, there's a lot of dates I just threw out you at you. A lot of people involved in this. Soleil Fiverr is the busiest person on the planet. Go to the site to find out if and when you can see it in Chicago, London, LA, wherever. (laughs) Love it. And we all are going gaga over this news. Okay, so look. Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors <laughs> is one of my favorite roles ever. Yeah, absolutely. Ellen Green is a dear friend, and she originated it, She's... and I love her so much, what mm-hmm. she did. And now, so right now, we have Timmy Blanchard doing it off-Broadway, yep. just started. Can't we wait. have MJ Rodriguez doing it Which in is L.A. unbelievable. And, who, by the way, I interviewed her, and there's going to be an interview going up on yes. the site. And then now we heard that Lady Gaga was apparently offered a role in the upcoming oh movie musical that we've been talking about for a while. There, there's been a sort of a slow burn right. on creating a new Little Shop of Horrors movie. The original one was pretty good, so it's going to be kind of kind of hard to top it. Yeah. But Lady Gaga, we don't know that they actually offered her. Us Magazine wrote about this. Right. We don't know that it's Audrey, but... 
I mean, what, what, what else would it be? <laughs> I mean, if you, offered, if, gender bending. if you offered her the role of Ronette, <laughs> then um, I mean, she should be playing Audrey. This is really good casting. It really uh, is. But, yeah. you know, it's kind of a rumored thing. We don't know much about it. We don't know if it's happening. In the past, we've heard Josh Gad might be Seymour. We've also heard Rebel Wilson for Audrey. Right. It's all great ideas, um, but it's a new Warner Brothers movie, and let's just wait and see. Fingers Cross. Yes, and cat full casting has been announced for world premiere staging. Yes, we were talking about On That Day in Amsterdam. It's a new play written by Clarence Koo. Uh, it'll be directed by Kareem Fahmy, and the, cla the cast will include Abu Bakr as Sammy, Jeffrey Umora as Kevin, Frankie J. Alvarez as Vincent, Evander Duck as Rembrandt. Oh my, I love the name Rembrandt. Rembrandt. I, a great right, name. It's, it's a great name. And Rocky <laughs> Vega as Anne. Uh, this takes place the morning after a one-night Stand, a refugee from the Middle East wakes up next to an American backpacker uh, who himself is the son of immigrants. Sounds like the start of a Netflix series. It does. It well, does. it sounds like the movie. Well, so let me finish. Uh, they have one day until they must leave Amsterdam, so they set out on a romantic adventure throughout the city. Did you ever see the movie in 2011 called Weekend? It was from the guy that ended up creating Looking on yeah. HBO. Yeah, yeah it sounded very couple. similar. They yeah. had one day together. Right, right. It's got a similar sort of thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this will begin previews at the Cherry Lane Theater off Broadway. Broadway on October 29th. It will officially open on November 19th, and it will be playing a limited engagement through December 18th. Sounds fascinating, so make sure you check it out. Amazing. And we found out who else is going to be kicking off their shoes in D.C. Or cutting loose, you may want to say. That's a good one. Everybody mm -hmm. cut foot loose at the Kennedy Center. Of course, uh, Walter Bobby, who directed the original Broadway production, is now directing it at the Kennedy Center. When is this happening? Soon. soon. Yeah, November very 9th soon. Through the 13th. We already knew uh, some of the leads, but we just found out Judy Kuhn, the fantastic Amazing. Judy Kuhn, will be playing Ren McCormick's mom. Her mm -hmm. name is Ethel. Uh, <laughs> Ethel McCormick. <laughs> and uh, she's previously been Tony nominated for Fun Home. She Loves Me, Les Mis, and My Obsession as a Child. The original Broadway cast recording of Chess. Thank you. Um, and mm -hmm. she was originally she was recently Golda in Fiddle on the Roof, both on Broadway and in the West End. Mm -hmm. And so she is now in Footloose. And also we found out Michael Mulherin, Rima Webb, Joshua Logan Alexander, and Nicole Vanessa Ortiz are all in it. This is a fantastic cast. They've been getting really great Truly, cast out. The, the Kennedy, Kennedy Center, Center is Jay Quinton Johnson is playing Ren. Isabel McCalla is playing Ariel. Michael Park, you just got like, you, got, you had like a little prom Isabel moment. McCullough. We try not to talk about the prom emotionally, oh. but she was in the prom. She was great. Uh, Michael Park, you can get fluttery about him yes. too if you want. Yeah, Rebecca yeah, Luker. Anyway, it's going to be great. Uh, and Spencer Lips choreographing. Anyway, it's going to be a really fun yeah. production. It's going to be a blast. What else is on the site? Um, we have our first look at In the Height of the Storm. Eileen Atkins and Jonathan Price are on mm. Broadway. They have, they've begun previews. I'm very excited to see that. Um, and White Christmas is coming back to the West End, and we found out who's in it. Yes. So. And also, uh, we uh, announced the season six of Broadway Balances America. That's the collaboration between Broadway Across America and Lifetime. Right. It kicks off September 30th with an episode on Jesus Christ Superstar, but it'll also be featuring Escape to Margaritaville, The Band's Visit, and Summer, the Donna Summer musical. You have been talking to a lot of fantastic stars going out on the road this week. I have. So I'm going to get out of here and Thank make way you. for today's. Yes. Yeah. Caitlin, would you tell us about our guest today. Gladly. Yes, we have Mr. Nick Fradiani here with us today. He's currently getting ready to head out on tour and a Bronx Tale national tour. Guys, you, maybe you know him. He kind of won a really small uh, co reality competition show called American Idol. Maybe you've heard of it. I don't know. Millions of people have. But, um, you know, he's done a lot of stuff. He's also touring with his own band. He did, they did um, America's Got Talent. He did American Idol. He's got a lot to say, and we're really happy to have him here. Make sure you follow him on social media at Nick Fradiani. Leave all of your questions in the comments down below. And everyone, please welcome Nick and Ryan. Welcome, What's sir. Going? We're so Thank excited to have you. Oh, my gosh. It is our pleasure to have you. We're so excited to talk with you. Um, this place is great, by the way. Thank you. So thank cool. you. Designed yes. it ourselves. I'm kidding. No, no, David <laughs> Corrins designed it for us. Yeah. Um, thank you. Very cool. Um, you are, you're headed out across the country. Mm -hmm. You're starring in A Bronx Tale, a yep. fantastic show. You're playing Lorenzo. Um, how excited are you to do Now, I, I'm not sure if you did, you know, acting in uh, middle school or high school or college, mm -hmm. but, the, you know, this is a first a pretty big deal yeah. for you at this point in your career. What made you want to do it? Well, um, really, I just got an email from my agent, and he said, you know, they want, you, would you be interested in coming yeah. in and, and reading? And um, right away, I'm a big fan of the, the movie. So me and my yeah. dad have watched that movie like 10 times. 
And uh, so I just felt an instant connection to the to Lorenzo. Sure. Um, they actually were going to have me read for Sonny and for Lorenzo. And I started reading the Sonny. I was like, there's no way I could pull that off. <laughs> I just didn't have that, I guess, that swagger. Right, right. But there was something about Lorenzo that I just, it clicked really quickly with me. Like, I didn't even obsess over learning the lines that much at first, but they, I just did quickly. Uh, yeah. I think just from knowing the story really well. And uh, yeah, that was it. Right. And this is kind of the first time for me in terms of, a musical so this is gonna be it's a big uh it's a little scary but it's like super <laughs> exciting um, right. i've enjoyed every minute of it so far and it's getting close so. yeah what a treat for your fans and yeah. you're playing the robert de niro role i'm assuming yeah. you just walked in and were like i want the robert de niro role or it's like, bust yeah, for yeah. i mean I, <laughs> it's funny because at first when i was trying to you know figure i was watching um I tried to, I was watching the movie at first, and mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I can't just go in there and try to, like, be Robert De Niro, because that's going right, to, like, with the, yeah. I can't even do that. I was like, I can't do that. Um, and obviously, Richard Blake had played it so incredibly right. well, um, and I had seen him uh, do it in New Haven, Connecticut. Oh, fantastic. So right, I got yeah. to watch him and, and do it at the Schubert, and so those are some big shoes to fill. So I kind of like trying to make it my own, but keeping it, mm -hmm. you know, I liked how Richard played the part, and obviously Robert, so just trying to make it my own yeah. but also i don't know it's going to be very uh, cool. it's going to be awesome yeah, yeah. it's going to be great as a you, i mean you're a songwriter of course mm -hmm. have, being able to sing the music that's written for the yeah. show must be um, in, in, some of Alan the greats yeah. yeah i mean written by just you know one of the best songwriters uh, of our time and uh, i really love the song that i auditioned with uh, these streets is like to me, it was just a, a song that, again, something I listened to a couple times and just knew it. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those catchy tunes. And uh, so I'm excited to, to be able to sing that every night. And there's a big note at the end, but I've like, <laughs> I like got myself. At first, I was a little scared yeah, of it. It was right. an A flat, and I'm holding it for a, a while. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I saw Richard do it, and he, he crushed it. So I was like, all right, I got to hit that note. <laughs> right. And uh, so far, so good. I've sung it a bunch for some different press things. Right. And, um, so I'm sure you'll be. You're, you're yeah. a pro. You'll be all right. Yeah, I probably right. shouldn't be worried about the singing. I should be worried about the. <laughs> I, should, I should be worried about the acting. No, and you. Um, <laughs> so the tour officially kicks off October 22nd, I believe, in Waterbury, Connecticut. Yeah, that's fantastic. As somebody that's from Connecticut, like that's got to be cool. Too. Yeah, I mean, look, we're doing uh, 18th and 19th in Elmira, New York, actually, right? too, for kind of just a. A little, that'll get me. That'll get me ready for grease the, the wheels. The, grease a little the wheels. Bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, at first when I saw, I was like, "Wow, we're opening." Because I'm, you know, I'm from Connecticut, so opening in your hometown or your home state is was a little. I was like, "I wish I had a couple under my belt," but yeah. uh, um, I think it'll be good. It'll be to a have, great uh, celebration. I'll my, yeah, I'll have my uh, my my fans and friends and family, and a lot of people are excited. You know, I've seen it on my social media and everything. How, you know, I I wasn't sure how my fans would 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 like it or not right, you know what right, I mean it's something right. totally different and the reaction is crazy and it's also wild to see how many people know that story the story of a Bronx Tale and have yeah. known that have either seen Chaz Palminteri uh do the the play the one-man act or have seen the movie mm -hmm. or have seen the musical it's a really um it's amazing the amount of people that, that yeah. really... Yeah, it's a beloved property, it which is, is yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, you, of course, uh, won American Idol in 2015. How yeah. did... Um, what was that... Uh, now that you've had some distance since yeah. that experience, um, when you reflect on it now, what do you think was the most valuable lesson that you learned throughout that process? And how did oh, that experience prepare you for uh, this part of your of your career? Um well, in terms of the, the last part of it, I mean, I think it does prepare you for kind of anything. Whatever's yeah. thrown at you, I think you just, you know, you don't get too panicky and you, you just know that you, you've done it before. Maybe not the, that exact same way, but you always kind of find a way to, you know, put forth your best, you know, your best performance. Totally. Or your, you know, uh, nothing, nothing's always going to go as you think it's going to go. And, right. Um, so I don't have a ton of... Um, experience in musical theater but I think that a lot of that you know being on live television yep. you having know, a presence having on a stage. presence I think yeah. it, it, it all definitely helped me uh, to get to this point um, and I think just overall um, you know it gave me a lot of a lot of more confidence in myself uh, that I was able to get to go through that whether mm -hmm. I had won or lost at that point just to be on it for that long and you know it's like a year of your life when you're on that show so right. it was uh, it was a lot of work and um, so yeah just uh, <laughs> It, it gave me confidence to, you know, go out for, for something like this or for to, to audition for a Bronx Tale. Um, 
you know, I think that's probably the, the biggest thing that it totally, did for me. totally. And as be, before we got started, we mentioned you are going to uh, sort of be simultaneously um, performing um, uh, your own material and stuff mm-hmm. that you know musically while you're touring the country with a Bronx Tale. You've got yeah. some whenever you're not on stage. You've got a couple of dates. You released a single earlier this year. Mm-hmm. So well, yeah, where for your fans that are watching now, where are you at with your um, your separate musical career yeah. at this point? Um, well, I'm still still writing and recording. I actually did a lot of writing and recording over the last couple of months to kind of because there really won't be any time for that. Yeah. To, from about <laughs> now <laughs> till till the end of May. Yeah. Um. So I wanted to kind of get a kind of a backlog of songs recorded and ready to go that I'll probably be releasing while I'm on the road. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, but yeah, the shows there's not a lot. I think there's about nine or so in the middle there because I'm. I don't want to overwhelm myself. <laughs> yeah. My focus is just on a Bronx tale. Certainly. And, uh, but I think it'll be good to kind of give my brain, uh, you know, a, if I have a day off to go and just play an acoustic show or something, you know, I think, you know, I'll probably need something like mm-hmm. that. And uh, so, yeah, I'm excited for that. But, yeah, you can go to my website. It has all the Bronx tale dates on there as, long, uh, as well as right. some of the solo uh, gigs that are kind of intertwined. Certainly, and I know, of course, you'll be performing in Connecticut, but you're also yeah. going to be performing in Nashville, yeah. I think, at one point as well. And you lived in Nashville for yeah. a while, right? Mm-hmm. What What was that experience like for somebody that you know sort of grew up and lived in Connecticut, and you call Connecticut home now right. again, right? What yeah. was What was Nashville like? Oh, I love Nashville. So my record label was was in Nashville. Um, I did a lot of songwriting in Nashville. Uh, made a lot of you know close close friends. Um, so yeah, I think we're doing Memphis and Knoxville, maybe I think. Mm-hmm. And then so I was like, I gotta try to if we have a day, I, I gotta <laughs> right. try to get to Nashville. So luckily, my agent, you know, put me in on a gig that's kind of in between. Um, so yeah, I, I just love that city. Have you? It's a great, I have never been. Uh, no, and I'm very so anytime really, I've heard someone's been or they're going, yeah, I'm very it's, eager. it's become so. it's crazy. I mean, I lived there in 2016 and 17, and it's like, it's it it just keeps there's just people coming in like constantly. Yeah. Like it's a growing. The growing city, the traffic is getting like borderline like LA ish. Like it's mm-hmm. really very, <laughs> you could tell people are moving in. So right, it's, it's a great, it's a great. If you love music, it's a, it's a great city. Now that you are going to be fully immersed in the in the musical theater world, was there any kind of do you can you look back when you were growing up? Were there musicals that you enjoyed watching or oh, yeah. learning about? What well, we were just talking. Um, I was I was uh, looking at the the musicals that are going on right now. Yeah. And, and, the first time my father ever remembered me uh, or him thinking I might be a musician was when I was a, a baby, like before I could really talk. And he was he loved Phantom of the Opera and um, the over the da, 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 da. oh absolutely that was like the first thing that I couldn't I just kept doing that as a really? little kid and he was like that's kind of weird that you could do that. Um, so I think that's when he was that was kind of so that was my first I remember having that soundtrack. My dad loved it. My my mother and father would listen to it a lot. Um, I saw Wicked was my first one that I've ever seen, and and I, and I loved that. Absolutely. I think my uh, my high school choir teacher actually brought um, brought us to see that, and I was like, I remember I didn't think I was gonna be into it just from what they were telling me, mm-hmm. like, oh, we're gonna go see this musical about witches, witches, and I was like, <laughs> I don't know about this, and I went, and I was blown away, you know, yeah. um, and obviously Rent was one of my favorites. So one song, Glory, is like a song that. I know it has this huge meaning, but like me and my friend were talking about as songwriters, you're always just looking for that that one song. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I know it had a much bigger meaning, um, you know, as it was, but that was probably. I'd say that one is probably my favorite, but now a Bronx Tale for sure. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Good way to stick to the brand. <laughs> now, once yeah. uh, once you're sort of uh, get a, you know fully immersed in this experience of traveling yeah. across the country in a fantastic musical, is it something that you think you'll want to return to? I mean, is this is this a um, uh, a journey in your career that is something you think you'll want to stick with? I I can't be. Tr- I don't know. To be honest with you, I think I'll probably have a better idea after yeah, totally. we get through May. Um, this has been something though that has been like really cool so far. Like I'm really enjoying it. Everybody I've met through it, and um, the music that I've been able to sing, and just uh, challenging myself has been has right. been to me really cool. I've been doing this other thing for a long time now, since I was like 18, in mm-hmm. terms of being serious with it. So um, it's really cool to do something different, and uh, I think at the end of the day. Being a songwriter is is my first passion and my first love, but there's something really cool about this, and I'm really excited to kind of see where it takes me, and uh, and we'll find out. Yeah. But 
I'm really enjoying kind of immersing myself as Lorenzo, and uh, it's been it's been good so far, and I'm excited yeah. to see where I could take it. What kind of work have you been doing? And we'll open it up to questions from the people. That, but what kind of work have you been doing to sort of find your Lorenzo, your yeah. take on this character? Well, it's funny. I to tell a quick story. I was um, so Ch my last the last audition was in front of some pretty big name people. <laughs> uh, Chaz Palminteri yeah. was sitting there, so I walked in and was kind of just and Jerry Zachs was sitting there, and I'm like. Oh man, I'm I'm a little I'm a little <laughs> frightened. But I think because I mean there was a lot of big names in 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 broad you know people that yeah. and I wasn't I didn't know a lot right, about it. So I think I was probably less nervous than some other people that mm -hmm. had been going in. True. And, um, but anyways, I, I end up getting the part, and then Chaz invites me to go eat dinner with him at his uh, restaurant. Absolutely. Which Absolutely. you got to go check out his restaurant. <laughs> you do. You do. Very good Italian food. But it was funny. I walked in there, and he's in the back with like a Newsies hat kind of on, like a movie. I mean, alone in the corner. He's just sitting there, and I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I feel like you got to tell yourself, no, you're okay. This is He's not sunny. That's just an actor. So I like sit, sit with him, and we have this awesome... Um, we have this awesome dinner. Now, I haven't even gotten a script yet at this point. I had just done my three scenes in the mm -hmm. audition I had to do, but I didn't have the whole script or anything. And he's like, so we're sitting there, just the two of us. And he's like, all right, so I'll be Sonny and um, you be Lorenzo and let's do the, when you uh, have to give back the money, <laughs> when you give your son's money back. And I'm like, you right, want, right now. I'm like, right now. He's like, yeah, like I have like steak, I got food all over. I'm like, um, all right. So we kind of started going back and forth with it. And uh, he gave me some pointers right there. And it was like, Wow. I don't think I'll ever be more nervous on stage than I was trying to be sure. his dad to him. You know, it was it was like a mind kind of blowing experience. And, no, uh, that's incredible. Yeah, it was really cool. And, uh, you know, he's just, the one cool thing he said to me to keep, you know, kind of keep my nerves down for this whole experience was that um, he's like, the hardest thing that he thinks about this, this role um, in the musical is the singing. He goes, you have, you know, These Streets is a tough song, and... He goes, you have two other songs that you need to kind of really bring it. And he goes, you could do that, right? And I said, yeah. And he's like, and the, he goes, not trying to sound cocky, he goes, but it's written too well. Your part is written too well where if you just say it with conviction and, you know, he's like, I think you're going to be wow. fine. And so that kind of made me f feel better about this Absolutely. whole thing. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be... Advice uh, from cool. the master. It's yeah, I mean, be he's the boss. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah. That's going to be very cool. Yeah. Caitlin, what would yes. some of our viewers like to know from Definitely. Nick? So Elise wants to know, what are you hoping audiences will take away from A Bronx Tale? When they leave the theater, what are you hoping they're thinking oh, great about? Great question. Um, for me personally, when I saw it, it reminded me of my father. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I think it's a... It's overall, it's a, it's a, it's a show about family, but... Mm -hmm. um, I think father and sons, I think if you, I mean, I shouldn't be saying this to Elise because it's, not a <laughs> but um, I think what you'll take away from it is that it's a, it's just a, f a show for a family. And I feel like if everybody goes together, they're going to really feel great when they leave. And um, yeah, I hope they just have a great time. There's awesome dancing. There's great singing. And just, it's a real story about Chaz's life. And I think uh, audiences are going to really like it. Yeah, your father's a musician mm -hmm. as well, right? So did he, um, how did he sort of kick off your, did he kick you off your interest in music? Um, was it something I mean, I guess always... he definitely kicked off my interest just because we always had good music um, on in the house all the time, you know. Yeah. But uh, he was actually, I was an athlete and played in, you know, played basketball in high school and college and he didn't play sports very much. So he kind of like latched onto that and made the music thing was kind of like whatever. He mm -hmm. didn't really, which you would think it would be the opposite. But, right. I'm kind of thankful that he did that because by the time I was in college, I was like, didn't want to deal with sports as much because he was pretty tough on me with that. Whereas <laughs> music was this enjoyable thing that me and him did together and that, that I did in my life. So, um, so yeah, we eventually, and now we still play music together all it's the time. Amazing. And yeah. He couldn't have been any more happy about this. You I know? bet. This, was like, <laughs> this movie was, was big for him. Like That's we love this growing up. I mean, the whole thing, we're diehard Yankee fans. So the whole, the whole Yankee aspect of it, I'm <laughs> talking to when I'm as Lorenzo, you know, I talk to him about Mickey Mantle and Joe DiMaggio, and I'm talking to Colosio, his son, <laughs> and it's just so cool. Like, there's one scene where I'm tossing a baseball back and forth with him, and he talks about you know working in the glove, and I can remember my dad doing all that wow, with me and saying yeah. those things to me. So, you know, I'm not a father, and I'm playing a father. So a lot of w me trying to, to take get into from. the character is is coming from my dad. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and my dad's, you know, very Italian and uh, <laughs> Frediani. And, uh, so we, um, 
Sometimes me and my sister, if we're like making fun of them, we'll we'll like really add the like the Bronx mm-hmm. accent, you know, the Italian right. accent. So I kind of like took a tiny bit of that too, like when I was auditioning. Was, you know, this is so, right in the pocket for you, yeah, Nick. So he, helped, yeah. he helped me out a lot. He helped me out a lot. That's so. great, and I think we can have time for one more. Yeah, we yeah. can do one more. And Jane wants to know: Does this feel different, like packing up and going across the country for mm. this Broadway show? Feel different than previous times you've gone across the country for tour? Um. Yeah, it does. I mean, one, it's it's longer for sure. I mean, it's. I think I was counting. I'm doing like 200 and something shows, and for me, I mean, adding. I think sure. it's 170 something for the Bronx Tale, and then some other one. I don't know the exact number, but that's it's a, lot a lot of shows. Yeah, <laughs> it's, and it's I, a lot but of... then I was talking to um, I was talking to people from the Nash that did the first national tour, and they had done their 1,000th show of a Bronx Tale, and I'm like, yeah. oh my god. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and Richard, who had done it, I think he almost got to a thousand. I mean, yeah, because yeah. he had done it on Broadway. He did the yeah. Broadway yeah. and the first national tour. And um, I was talking to him about it. And he, I mean, that that made somebody who had played so many different amazing roles. And to, for him to be that connected to the character for that long that he wanted to keep doing it, that kind of um, got me excited to want to do this. Yeah. So I think, but to answer the question, yeah, it does feel a little different. Um, Mainly because when I go on the road with my music, I know what I've, I've done it. Hmm. You know what I mean? This is my first time, so there's a little more nerves, but uh, a lot more, a lot of excitement too. Yeah. yeah. No, awesome. and then people, uh, people, you should be very, very excited all across the country to see a Bronx Tale. Yes, come see the it. musical. Come see it. Come see this guy. Thank you so much, Nick, for coming yeah, by and chatting with, with us. Yeah, We're really awesome. excited to have you here. Um, enjoy your time on the road. Thank you, Caitlin. Would you please take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow and we talk to Derek Davis, The Phantom, and The Phantom of the Opera National Tour.